All right, this is a brand new I Am Rappaport Stereo Podcast. My name is Michael Rappaport, a.k.a. The Gringo Mandingo. On today's episode, we are celebrating Joe Pesci. It was Joe Pesci's birthday. We are not taking this guy for granted. He's one of the greats, one of the most original actors of the last 30 years. Happy birthday. Everybody loves Joe. The final word on the Grammys... I will stick by what I said last week because I had to watch him perform again. Travis Scott is not dope. I explain. Plus, 2019 is not the year of the dragon. It's not the year of the monkey. 2019 is the year of blackface. It is the year of the blackface. More blackface controversy is Katy Perry. You know, Katy Perry, I kissed a girl and I liked it with the chapstick and all that dumb shit. She tried to put out some black face shoes. I don't get it. I don't want to get it. All that and more on a banging big body, hard body karate, I am Rappaport Stereo Podcast. Miles Jordan, let me get something real nice, something real proper, but most importantly, oh yeah, something real funky. See, I am Rappaport Stereo Podcast. Let's go. All right. Brand new banging I am Rappaport stereo podcast. Live from the gloom tomb of New York City. I am in New York City uh, where the weather actually gets freezing fucking cold. Um, It's not even freezing cold here. I have just, my blood has thinned um, from being in Los Angeles so much. And I'm going to be honest, I don't miss the cold ever. Never, ever, ever do I ever miss the cold um, ever. I don't miss it. I don't think about it. I don't uh, uh, yearn for it. Um, I miss uh, my friends. I miss uh, my family here. Um, But I'm happy to wait to see them in the spring, summer, fall, and early winter. I don't like the fucking cold. New York is a walking city. New York is a go about town city. And when it's fucking freezing, you don't want to go anywhere. Uh, But I'm here. I am gearing up to host the Wendy Williams show tomorrow. I will be hosting the Wendy Williams show February 13th. I assume that most of the I Am Rappaport Stereo podcast fans do not record the Wendy Williams show. Um, I suggest you record Wednesday the 13th, which would be tomorrow in real time, um, and check it out, because I'm going to be on there live. I had a pre-production meeting with them, and the not cursing conversation came up not once, but twice, a total of... Three conversations with me about not cursing. And I have no problem with that. I said, you guys could, you could have this conversation while we're taping during commercial breaks. You know, they have a uh, um, uh, teleprompter. Uh, It's not a teleprompter. It's a uh, thing in your ear. I forgot what the, the term is. But you have a thing in your ear when you're doing these live shows. All these hosts, they have these things in their ear saying, go to break, call for a commercial. Um, Ask him about his experience uh, in this, you know, when they're doing interviews. And and, and they could uh, remind me during this teleprompter. It's not a teleprompter. It's a you. I don't know what it's called. I'm sorry. I said, you could could remind me every five minutes live while we're on live television not to curse. I do not. I do not have a problem with it. And I totally understand. I will say the only infraction I ever had was about, I don't know, six years ago. I was on um, some show on ESPN with me and Jamel Hill, and I referred to the way Bill Belichick was answering questions from the media as retarded. I said, I don't know why he's doing that retarded this or something like that. Um, and this is, it might even have been seven years ago. It seems like it was a while ago because it was before I had Twitter. I know that. And it was before Twitter was bumping off the way it is 
now, where you could say that now and then uh, be yanked off of live television, um, thrown down some sort of shoot, and never heard from again. So the point is, is that I can control myself. Now, when we're doing the I Am Rapport Stereo podcast, this award-winning championship podcast that you're listen- listening to, I could say whatever the fuck I want whenever the fuck I want. Want it. And this is how I prefer to speak openly, honestly, and not curb my language. Okay? But that being said, I, I, I'm not a savage and I know how to do it. The point is, is that I will be on the Wendy Williams show the 13th of February and it's going to be magical. I could just feel it. It's going to be a magical, non cursing, shit talking extravaganza. See, I pride myself in the fact that I could still talk shit without having to say shit and so on and so on. Um, a couple of days late, uh, it was this weekend, but everybody loves Joe Pesci. Everybody loves Joe. Joe Pesci just turned 75 years old. Joe P., and, and, and I was just thinking about uh, Joe Pesci um, and how unique and how original of an actor he is and how um, he brought such a specific, special thing, um, which is why he, he, he stands out. Um, nobody gets angry the way Joe Pesci gets angry. Nobody is as funny being angry as Joe Pesci. Um, his work f- speaks for itself. Of course, he, he had his big break in my favorite movie of all time, Raging Bull. Uh, but did you know Joe Pesci? He was a child actor, which is weird. But when he was a kid, he, he was on some show. I never saw it. Uh, the Lucy show, which I don't think was a very successful show. Um, but he, he was on television shows when he, when he was a kid. Um, and then of course he got discovered by Scorsese and De Niro through, I believe the great Frank Vincent, the late great Frank Vincent who passed away, um, who's the actor who was in Raging Bull and Goodfellas and Sopranos with the beautiful thick gray hair. Um, and he was a, a singer and all that stuff. Anyway, Joe Pesci, uh, just turned 75 and, and let's not take him for granted the work that he has done, and the skill that he has. Because I think somebody like Joe Pesci who uh, makes it look so easy and you're like, you know, he's kind of like that in real life, th- th- that's never the case. Whether somebody is is kind of like it, a lot like it, uh, comes from that and plays mobsters and he knew mobsters, Joe Pesci is a highly skilled, highly talented, totally unique actor who, who brought a specific energy, a specific sort of uh, uh, cadence, uh, a specific sort of genuineness to his performances, uh, 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 all his performances, even the the comedies uh, like Lethal Weapon, Lethal Weapon 2, I think it was, and Home Alone, and My Cousin Vinny, and, and, um, you know, all the obvious stuff, Goodfellas, and A Bronx Tale, and Casino, um, and, and he's just one-of-a-kind actor, and you know, he, there's this film coming out this year, I think they shot it in 2017, and they finished in 2018, The Irishman, uh, which is, this is going to be fucking exciting, I'm going day one, screening one, to see this, The Irishman, which is directed by Martin Scorsese, um, and it's starring Al Pacino, Robert De Niro, Joe Pesci, I guess Ray Romano's in there, which he, he's, he's a pretty good actor. Um, and it's going to be sick. It's going to, Harvey Keitel is in it. It's going to be sick. It's a mob film based on this book called uh, They Paint Houses, Don't They? About the Irish mob and the Irish mob's connection with the Italian mob. And it's coming out on Netflix, but I know it'll be in the movie theater for two days. And I will not go, I will not be watching that movie for the first time on Netflix. I will be in the theater 
in a uh, the first screening, and and I'm sure there'll be some other lunatics in there the first screening, first day. Uh, but I, I I can't wait. The only thing that I'm concerned about the Irishman, um, the new Scorsese, De Niro, Pesci, and Pacino. Pacino's never worked with uh, Martin Scorsese. Um, is that they're de aging the actors. And this is a big fucking concern to me. They are using some sort of CGI process to de age Joe Pesci, Robert De Niro, and Al Pacino um, because the film spans time. Uh, so at one point in the film, uh, they're, you know, they, the age that they are now. And at some point in the film, uh, they're going to be like 40 and 50 years old. And I am concerned about that. Um, because the reason why it concerns me about with these guys, uh, uh, who are so iconic and, and specifically myself, but I think everybody, we, we've watched Joe Pesci. We've watched Al Pacino. We've watched De Niro as young men. So we know what they look like uh, uh, when they were 40, 50, uh, 30. I don't know how fucking, how back in time they're taking them. Um, but I just, if it looks weird or looks fake, especially when you watch it on television, because these televisions where they like, you could see every blemish. I just, I just hope it doesn't look weird because that'll take you out of the movie. If like Robert De Niro all of a sudden looks 30 and it doesn't look like a natural Robert De Niro at 30, it could be weird. That, that's my biggest concern with it. But uh, that's why I guess the film is taking so long because they're doing it at the highest level, blah, 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 blah. I'll be there day one, screening one, uh, no matter what, uh, with my full review. And I believe the film is coming out November of 2019, and I'm already hyped. What else am I hyped about? The fucking Grammys. I don't know why... Particularly in hip hop, these young rappers even concern themselves with the Grammys. And, and, and the funny thing is about the Grammys is that all these artists, especially hip hop dudes, they all say, we don't give a fuck about the Grammys. Uh, Grammys don't mean shit. We don't need the Grammys to validate us until they win the Grammy. That's the fucking thing. No one cares about the fucking Grammys until they win it. Then they're guffawing and crying and hyperventilating and all that shit. Um, and you should have just listened to Chuck D when he infamously said, and I quote, Who gives a fuck about the goddamn Grammys? That, 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 was, that was right. 30 years ago, if you remember, Will Smith, The Fresh Prince... Chuck D, uh, all the all the kid in play, salt and pepper, they uh, all got nominated for Grammys for the first time, um, and then the Grammys decided not to show the best hip hop song or best rap song or whatever they refer to it as, and they didn't show up at the Grammys. Now listen, it's easy for me to say, oh these awards don't mean shit, and then when you get them, how exciting it is. But regarding hip hop, these awards don't mean shit. The fact that they nominate some of the people that they even nominate is is a joke. And it just, it, 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 it shouldn't be exciting just because the best people aren't even given the awards, the award nominations. Um, Cardi B won best rap song or best rap record and all that stuff. Um, I, know, I know I'm a rap purist and all that stuff, but when you don't acknowledge the album that Eminem put out, um, and I don't think the Pusha T record was nominated for certain. And, and who, listen, these Grammys are whack as fuck. Okay. Um, and the entire Grammys itself uh, uh, was whack. And I'm in New York and I didn't have good cable connection. I was, try, I was trying to watch the Warriors play the Miami Heat, but I couldn't get a good NBA TV connection on my cable. So I just kept watching the Grammys. And it's just the show itself is whack. And, and I said it last week after the Super Bowl, and I'll say it again after having to watch him two times in a row. Watch this guy two times in a row. This dude, Travis Scott, he's not dope. I watched him at the Super Bowl perform 
whack. And then I watched him perform at the Grammys. Whack. Whack. And I tweeted something about this and people were like, you, you old. Blah. And I'm like, my ears ain't old and I'm not that old, Duke. You're mad because you're sitting there humping and gyrating and, and you're working out to this dude, Travis Scott. That's on you. I watched him perform live on two of the biggest platforms ever. That means if I'm any, any artist, I'm going to give the best show I possibly can. You're on the Super Bowl and you're on the Grammys exactly seven days later. And both times, you're straight trash. There is nobody who can tell me that Travis Scott on the Super Bowl and Travis Scott on the Grammys is something uh, to rewatch ever. I don't get it at all. Money is not dope. He's not dope as a performer. He's not dope as a, as a song maker. The songs are whack and their performances are whack. Whack plus whack, you know what that equals? That's right, whack. It's, it's basic arithmetic. Whack plus whack always equals whack, okay? Um, Lady Gaga, you're panting and whimpering that you do every time you win an award, whether it's an award for a singer or some of these awards you've won as an artist, it's getting old. It's a shtick. Every single, like I get it when you're new. Uh, I, I get it when you, you first, but every time she's like, huh, huh, okay, uh, uh. she's like fucking convulsing and whimpering and panting. Get a hold of yourself, lady. Gaga. Get a hold of yourself. It's a fucking, it's an act. Every single time you win, you win an award, it, it's like you're all over the fucking place. People were offended that Jennifer Lopez was the lead performer in the Motown tribute. I get it. Um, but not because she's Latin. Because at the core, Jennifer Lopez can't sing. And any person that was ever signed or performed under the Motown label, the first thing that they could do before dancing and performing the biggest skill set had to be singing, whether it's Marvin Gaye, Stevie Wonder, Diana Ross and the Supremes, uh, uh, Smokey Robinson. The voice is first. Everything else was just icing on the Motown performing cake. Now, I love Jennifer Lopez just as much as the next person. I've always loved her. Who doesn't love fucking J-Lo? Um, but people uh, uh, were dissing her uh, because, and, and, and dissing her whole uh, um, involvement in a... Motown tribute during the Grammys because she's Latin. They should be more offended at the fact that they put somebody up there that can't really sing. She could dance. She's a great performer. But singing isn't her strong suit. She's a fine singer. But you're not going to uh, prop Jennifer Lopez up to hear her sing the national anthem a cappella. You, you, you're not going to sit there and watch Jennifer Lopez without the bells and whistles and the, the lightning and the the, the, the backup dancers and the, the, the big screen behind her and all that. She needs that. And that's fine. That's the kind of performer she is. But the Grammys were very clear that there's a huge Motown 60th anniversary coming up in, I believe, March. And this was just a little precursor. And all the big guns, Stevie Wonder, Jennifer Hudson, all the, uh, the, the Motown singers that uh, are still alive, and all the badass singers and... I'm sure fucking, uh, what's his name? Uh, what the fuck is his name? Usher and all them are going to be performing at that CBS Grammy 60th anniversary. But most people didn't even watch the fucking Grammys. They're just complaining. It's this goddamn fucking Twitter. This Twitter. Twitter is like, hey, there needs to be a, a, a third party. I'm sick of this fucking Twitter. They have a stronghold on everything and they create fake news. People are saying, people aren't saying shit. A couple of people on Twitter tweeted this and they're like, well, people are saying, people are upset. Give me a fucking break with the Twitter shit. I'd be more offended about Travis Scott doing Travis Scott than Jennifer Lopez doing Motown. That to me is more offended, offensive. 
that Travis Scott is considered the biggest, most successful rap artist of 2018, and he's not a good performer himself. <sighs> what else is good? Katy Perry. Katy fucking Perry. I swear I do not get how in 2019, 2019 is going to be the year of the blackface. I, I, I don't get this shit. You got Gucci blackface uh, controversy. You got those fucking lunatics down in Virginia with their blackface. One of them dressed up in blackface said he's Michael Jackson. The other one said he uh, dressed up in blackface, said he's Curtis Blow. And now Katy Perry. Yeah, that Katy Perry. You know, Katy Perry, I kissed the girl, Katy Perry. She's in some blackface controversy uh, about she has a shoe line. And one of the designs is called Blackface. And it's an all-black shoe with like, with like, a, like a blackface, like the, the, the stereotypical minstrel uh, blackface features. Not totally like over-the-top bamboozled style, but enough in this fucking climate, the year of the blackface, usually got the year of the dragon, the year of the monkey, uh, the year of the rhino. This is the year of the fucking blackface. Um, so she's in the middle of the... I, the here's a suggestion. For everybody, and I don't like to self-promote unless, you know, it's something like me hosting Wendy Williams. But in general, I don't like to self-promote myself. Motherfuckers need to re-watch the movie that I did with Spike Lee. Not because I'm in it. Rewatch Bamboozled. Rewatch fucking Bamboozled. First of all, it's a really good film, but it'll explain everything. It's a crash course a 90 minute i think it's 90 minutes or 100 minutes a 100 minute crash course in the history of blackface why it's offensive and why it would be offensive to have any fucking doings with blackface in 2019 and that fucking movie came out and i think uh fucking 1999 or 2001 or two i don't know when the fuck it came out if this was like 1987, I, I would understand. Oh, there's all these blackface cases, and it's 2019. I'm not sitting here saying I'm Mr. Fucking Purity and Mr. Perfect and Mr. Uh, you know uh, everything's right and uh, uh, kosher, but blackface? We talking about blackface? To quote the great Allen Iverson, blackface? Wait a minute. Wait a minute. We talking about? Blackface. Y'all got me here talking about blackface? Again, to quote the great Allen Iverson's rant about practice. Uh, Miles Jordan, please play a little bit of that practice rant. We sitting here, I supposed to be the franchise player, and we in here talking about practice. I mean, it, listen, we talking about practice. Not a game, not a game, not a game. We talking about practice. Allen Iverson said practice. We talking about practice. And I said Blackface? We talking about blackface? This is crazy to me that this continues to come up fucking like every day. It's like fu telling you, it's the year of the blackface. I am Rappaport Podcast. <laughs> the new year means new resolutions, and we've got one you're working on twice every single day, brushing your teeth. And with a Quip electric toothbrush, sticking to good habits is simple. The guiding features of a Quip toothbrush is the built-in support system for better brushing. Quip toothbrushes have a built-in two-minute timer every 30 seconds. It reminds you when to switch size to get a balanced, healthy brushing of your teeth. You need it. I need it. Everybody needs it. Up to 90% of us do not brush our teeth for a full two minutes. Plus, with a Quip toothbrush, there are no wires, no clunky chargers, and it runs for three months on a single charge. Quip toothbrush heads are automatically delivered on a dentist's recommended schedule every three months for just $5. A friendly reminder when it's time to refresh and stay committed to your oral health. 75% of us use old, worn out, uncomfortable, not pleasant feeling Ineffective toothbrushes. Quip is one of the first electric toothbrushes accepted by the American Dental Association. They are backed by over 25,000 dental professionals. 
Quip starts at just $25 if you go to get Quip. G E T Q U I P G E T Q U I P dot com. Getquip.com forward slash I am Rappaport right now. You can get your first refill for free. That's your first refill pack for free at getquip.com slash I am Rappaport. You want to have a good time? You got to have good teeth. Go to getquip.com now forward slash I am Rappaport. Kareem Hunt, Kareem Hunt, the Kansas City Chief running back, former Kansas City Chief running back, who uh, got cut by the Chiefs. Uh, I don't remember what, what remember what week it was, but because the video of him uh, fighting in the hallway and pushing the girl and then kicking the girl um, came out, they cut his ass immediately, which I think is a smart thing to do. You can't fuck around. They cut his ass immediately. He just got picked up by the Cleveland Browns. Um, His whole case, that whole situation is under investigation still. I think he's going to wind up getting... Shit. They don't fuck around now. Six, Six games? Eight games? Could he possibly miss a whole season? Unless... Unless Kareem Hunt... Uses the old N-word excuse. Oh, yeah. Kareem Hunt, if you're listening, and he might be listening, we drafted him. He was the number one draft pick uh, in, I believe, the Stern Show? He was the number one draft pick in one of my fucking fantasy football leagues, and he was kicking ass. I think he was the number one draft pick. Number two, listen, Kareem Hunt is a fucking beast. But if you're out there listening, Kareem Hunt, and you want to try to fight for your career and your your professional career, you need to pull out the old N-word excuse. Because if you watch the videotape, the woman that he's in the uh, little altercation with, and I say little not to demean it, cannot put your fucking hands on women. You can't put your feet on women. Don't do it. So I'm not in any way... uh, uh, Making it smaller than it was by saying little. Just going off the cuff here. I'm talking my shit. But Kareem Hunt, if you want to fight this case, you're going to get suspended no matter what. But it could be a matter of an entire season suspension, eight game suspension. They might suspend this motherfucker 10 games. Who knows? You better pull out the old N-word excuse. Yo, I fucked up. I shouldn't have done what I did. I blacked out because when she called me the N-word, I had never been called that before in my life, and I bugged out. Again, I I apologize. I was wrong. I take all the suspension that you're going to give me. I'll seek uh, counseling. I'll do community service. I'll donate money. But I did black out when she called me the N-word. Kareem Hunt, that is your only fucking thing. It's the only excuse that you have to soften the blow, which you're inevitably going to face, and you should fucking face it. Out there fighting with girls, pushing girls, arguing with girls in the hallway. Get, come on, man. That's dumb shit. That's real fucking dumb shit. That's not just dumb shit. That's real dumb shit. The NBA is... I said this before, I, I need a break. I need an all-star break myself. Like, I need a complete, like, no basketball, no drama, no Anthony Davis, no LeBron James, no LeVar Ball, no, no, none of it. And those are really the only people. That's, that's the drama. The drama is LeBron James, Anthony Davis, Anthony Davis's father, and LeVar Ball. Pretty much everybody, like Kyrie's in and out, he's flash, he flashes. But in general, it's really LeBron James and the Lakers. And when you think about it, all the drama, the LeBron James drama, it's pretty fucking sad. And, you know, I talk my shit about LeBron James. And when he's not in the NBA, the NBA is going to have to fill a void. 
Uh, because as great as Steph is, as great as Kevin Durant is, as great as Kyrie is, as great as uh, the Greek freak is, um, as great as Luka Doncic uh, could possibly become, who I didn't realize fucking 19 years old, that kid on the Dallas Mavericks. I always think those Europeans are like 30. Because that's in the old days. That's when uh, old days. Fuck. <laughs> old days. Uh, th that's how old they were. They'd come over here when they were 27 and 29 and all that shit. He fucking kid's 19. Um, I don't know what gave me the impression he was 25. Maybe it's the way he plays or the way he carries himself. But he's, that motherfucker is good. But him, um, um, you know, the Kuzmas, the Donovan Mitchells, and all of them. Nobody is as transcendent. Nobody is as polarizing for good or for bad, uh, for shit talking, for envy, for, uh, 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 you know, goat talk as LeBron James. But this motherfucker takes up all the fucking air in every conversation. I'm listening to my guy Skip and Shannon last week. LeBron, 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 LeBron. I'm listening to Chris Boussard um, fill in for Skip and Shannon uh, this morning. LeBron, 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 Lakers, 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 Lakers. I'm like, yo, Russell Westbrook is averaging a triple-double right now for the third season in a row. If he, if he continues, it'll be three seasons in a row. I have my problems and my skeptic skepticism about his triple-double averaging, but the facts are the facts. Giannis is a fucking badass. That kid down in Dallas is 19. They should be saying that every day. Homeboy down in Dallas, that donkey fuck. And, I, and I'm going to hate on him now just by association of Porzingis. I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm never going to really be able to love him. It's sad. I'm letting you know too, right now. I'm never going to really be able to love uh, a donkey uh, and appreciate donkey. I'm always going to associate him with fucking Porzingis. Um, but Donovan Mitchell, Kuzma, well, you can't even talk about him. He's a Laker. Um, you, you, all the great things that are going on in the NBA, and there's plenty of fucking talent. Uh, the emergence of De'Aaron Fox as a second-year really good player. He's improved. All the good things. Ben Simmons, Joel Embiid, all these, none of these fucking guys um, get even the smidge of shine, uh, whether you love them, hate them, or everything in between that LeBron gets. And when he goes, there's going to be a big discussion uh, that is going to be missing. Because before LeBron, it was Kobe uh, uh, and Allen Iverson uh, and, and that whole crew. And that, that covered a lot. And Shaq, you know, uh, D. Wade. And then, you know, it was D. Wade and LeBron and the big three. But it wasn't just solely LeBron. Every fucking day, it's LeBron. And now it's, it's, it's magic. Something happened. I don't even know where it started from or, or how this happened. It's whack as fuck. But apparently, Ben Simmons. Asked Elton Brand, shout out to my man Elton Brand, who's the GM of the 76ers, if in the offseason he could work out with Magic Johnson. And I'm thinking to myself, my man, why would you even bring that up if you're a Philadelphia 76er? Like, why would you even why would you even bring that up to, to, to the Sixers? Like, I, I know you're from Australia, um, but you know better. That's just some dumb shit. Like, I love the fact that the Greek freak is not fucking with anybody but the Milwaukee Bucks. He's not uh, on boats. He's not down in Miami. He's not working out. He's not hanging, hanging around with anybody other than his teammates. And, of course, these guys are friends. They play. They grew up together. They played college together. Uh, they have endorsement deals together. There's Nike dudes. There's Under Armour dudes. There's Adidas dudes. There's uh, now Pony, uh, Puma dudes. There's Converse dudes. All that shit. I, I get it. You do commercials together. But like I was saying a, a, a couple of days ago about uh, LeBron, um, you know, uh, uh, singing slow jams to Kyrie. Give the fans, have respect for the fans to give us the illusion that you don't like each other. You know, this, this friends and family hanging out in the DMs, you know, laughing and, 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 and commenting on other people's Instagram, 
Save all that shit. Do it in private. Give us the illusion that when push comes to shove, you're going to fucking clothesline anybody that's not on your team. We deserve that as fans. We deserve that illusion, even though we know it's not really true. Please. It's getting out of control. Why the fuck are you asking Magic Johnson, who's 56 years old or some shit, if he's going to work out with you? What the fuck is Magic going to teach you anyway? He can't run and jump and do all that shit anymore, Ben Simmons. You want to learn from Magic Johnson? Watch his old tapes. He's not playing on any more fucking ball. Why would he teach the point guard of one of the Lakers' greatest historical rivals? Anything. Why would he teach you that, Duke? What the fuck is you doing asking? And then Magic's got to defend himself. Magic's already got mixed up in a tampering thing. He got fined $250,000. Leave, don't talk to Magic. And Magic, yo, stop being nice to these dudes. Take away LeVar Bowles access to anything special at the Staples Center. He talked greasy about you. The shit he was saying about you, Magic, last week, in public, I hope you got something lined up real nice and real proper for Lonzo Ball. I know Magic's not going to get caught up in his emotions and he's going to do what's best for the Lakers and do the best business decision, but, but I hope he's got a little cherry on top. Oh, your father was talking shit? Now, nah, fuck that. If you can't control your father, I don't know what it's going to be, but you need to take control. Stop smiling all the time, Magic. Stop laughing and shit all the time. You need to get fucking mean out there. Be a mean GM. Just a little bit, because things are out of control. The other thing that's out of control with the sports media, and, I, I, and Skip and Shannon, those are my dudes, Broussard, all those guys, I love them all. Stephen A. Smith, I love all these guys. I'm a fan before, before I was rocking. This... this conversation about whether Tom Brady is more of a goat, greatest of all time, or a better winner than Michael Jordan, or a better winner than LeBron James, is dumb as fuck. Dumb AF. Uh, I don't think I need to explain why comparing a football player to a basketball player is stupid. Okay, and, and I wish I was more articulate than just calling it stupid, but it's stupid. It's real fucking dumb. He's a football player. These are basketball players. They're two different sports. One sport has five men on the court. The other sport has 11 men on the court playing offense and 11 men on the field. I know I said court playing defense. Okay. This oh, well, Tom Brady's got six rings and, and Michael Jordan's got six rings and no one discusses Kareem Abdul-Jabbar who's also got six rings and was unstoppable. Kareem Abdul-Jabbar was a scoring machine and he would be a scoring machine in this NBA because the motherfucker could skyhook from the three-point line. Go watch some Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, Lou Alcindor highlights if you don't believe me. The motherfucker was skyhooking from all over the court. When you could hand check, push, shove. And he's in a, a karate movie with Bruce Lee. They just disrespect Cap. But, but the conversation of who's a greater winner or who's the real GOAT is just, it's just dumb. And, I, and I, I get it. People like it. I guess it's a debate that people like. Okay, let's have it one time. Why is this being discussed every day, every week? On all the sports shows. It's fucking ridiculous. Is Serena Williams a greater winner than Joe Montana? What? What are you talking about? Oh, is Hussein Bolt uh, a greater winner than Lawrence Taylor? What? What are we, what are we talking about here? All right, and now we're going to get to the sick fucks of the week. But before we play the now remixed reimagined sick fuck of the week theme song i would love to hear people's opinions of the sick fuck of the week theme song um there's going to be less dming i'll say it again there's going to be less dming um more emailing okay that's because i i, I we 
we just can't keep up with the amount of DMs. It's just too much. So yeah, if you DM me, um, hopefully I'll be able to respond to it. But the quicker, most guaranteed way to correspond with us, uh, me, uh, Miles Jordan, and the think tank at the I Am Rapport Stereo Podcast is the emails. I am Rappaport Podcast at gmail.com. I'll say it again. I am Rappaport Podcast at gmails.com. Okay. Now, the reason why I'm asking your opinions on the new remixed, reimagined Sick Fuck of the Week theme song is because one person uh, said to me he didn't like the remixed version of the I Am Rapport Stereo Podcast award winning Sick Fuck of the Week theme song. He said that he didn't like the chicken and he didn't like the screaming. Um, and I have to say, I, I, I disagree. Um, as you could hear in the remixed, reimagined Sick Fuck of the Week theme song, um, I am asking, why are you doing that to the chicken? You're not supposed to be doing that to a chicken. And um, I don't believe it's screaming. I believe it's a chicken yelling for its life. Okay, so uh, re-listen to the Sick Fuck of the Week theme song, um, and let's get into it. This is the I Am Rap Horse Stereo Podcast Sick Fuck of the Week segment. <laughs> this is an award that is earned, not given. Earned, not given. It's called the Sick the Fuck of the Week. Of the sick She's fuck. really fucking sick, man. She's fucking whack. Why? Make him stop. You smell like a sick fuck. You look like a sick fuck. That ain't fuck. supposed to be on a plane, you sick what are you, fuck what, you. What are you doing? Hey, man, leave that chicken alone. Leave the chicken alone. Well, what are you doing to the chicken? That doesn't belong in a chicken. All right. All right. This is an award that is given out weekly on the I Am Rap Poor Stereo podcast. This is an award that is given out weekly. It is earned, however. It is earned. It isn't given to anybody doing anything it's going out to the certain certain kind of sick fuck with a uh a flair a flair a certain charismatic quality uh the french call it um i forget my french is not good uh, a certain je ne sais quoi now the first sick fuck is hailing from the state of florida um, and although we said that the Arizona nurse who impregnated the woman who's been in a vegetable state for years was going to be the sick fuck of the year, lo and behold, lo and behold, somehow, some way, that guy may have met his match. Oh, man. Florida, you never, ever, ever disappoint William Shorter a sick fuck of the week named William Shorter a caregiver was arrested for impregnating a client with the mental capacity of a small child 58 year old sick fucking Willie Shorter Worked at the Woodsmere Estate Group Home in Rockledge, Florida, where he was responsible for caring of a group of people with developmental disabilities. Apparently, there has been an investigation that has been going on since January of 2015 when this woman gave birth to a baby who is incapacitated and, again, has the capabilities the mental capacity of a small of a small child after a four year investigation dna samples voluntary involuntary this that and the third william shorter has been arrested he was arrested a few days ago for impregnating a disabled person with the mental capacity of a small child we will be following this closely very closely at the I Am Rapport Stereo Podcast Sick Fuck of the Week Think Tank. The next Sick Fuck of the Week, and I'm surprised there's not more. Actually, there's good people out there um, in Staten Island. They are hardworking, good, strong, solid New Yorkers. It's just a shithole. Staten Island. 
Staten Island. Two Staten Island men have been arrested for beating their drug buddy. These are all junkies, three junkies. Two of these junkies beat their drug buddy to death with a baseball bat and then stashed his dead body, which was essentially a rotten corpse, in their garage for six months, then took the rotting corpse slash dead body and buried it into the nearby woods. Now, needless to say, these two junkie cocksuckers, um, they they um, obviously aren't that smart. I think they were on that meth or that glass, but Troy Williams and Stephen Mazzelli have been charged with killing their 50-year-old ex-con drug addict friend, Mandel Harvey, in a drug-related robbery. Um, they robbed him of some of his crack while he was sleeping and beat him to death, blah, 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 stashed the body, and then said, oh, you know, this probably isn't going to work out. And then uh, wound up putting the body in the woods, and they got busted. These are, these are junkie cocksuckers. And uh, this is what happens when you're a junkie, cock-sucking, sick fuck. Again, in the five boroughs, a Brooklyn man who was locked up in Rikers Island, okay? He's already arrested and locked up and being tried for the attempted, attempted murder of his half-brother, okay? So the case hadn't been to court yet. This cocksucker tried to hire a hitman for $5,000 to finish the fucking job. And I got to be honest with you. I have to be really honest with you. At some point, we need to say, well, what the fuck did his half-brother do to him? Because he tried to kill him himself, didn't do it. And then while locked up on the island, nobody is smiling on the island. Look up, Cool G Rap. Shout out to Cool G Rap. Ain't no smiling on Rikers Island. Anthony Tejeda was caught on a, record, a recorded phone call talking to a firearms, alcohol, and tobacco agent, an undercover guy that he believed was a hitman. And he was saying, quote, unquote, I definitely need that situation taken care of. Yada, yada, yada. The... The undercover cop said, you want him dead like dead dead? And he said, yes, I wasn't trying to bullshit you. Yes. Now, this guy obviously is a sick fuck. But at some point, we need to question, why is this guy going so far out of his way, adding insult to injury to get his half-brother killed, a.k.a. whacked? Next up. In Virginia, this is a good one. This is this is a really good one. Antonio Smallwood was arrested the other day for allegedly. I don't know why they have to use this word allegedly. I guess nobody wants to get sued. Everybody's trying to sue everybody. Even a sick fuck can get a lawsuit on you. But Antonio Smallwood who's 41 years old, was arrested the other day for allegedly, I'll say allegedly too, because I don't want anybody coming after me, for projecting a porno on his garage door for his neighbors to see he got out the projector and put up a no-no in the middle of the fucking day. He put a porno on during the middle of the day that projected on his garage door. This guy... This, this guy, this guy is every single thing that you think of when you think of that certain je ne sais quoi, that it factor. I don't know what the fuck was going on, but police were called, an officer arrived, they saw a movie involving sexual activity being uh, projected on the garage door, and so forth, and so on. Who knows who also saw it? Kids in the neighborhood, old ladies, you could give somebody a heart attack. Uh, we're going to be following this story closely because this is a guy that could sneak into the top 10. Just for, when you think about it, 
Well, what, what are you doing, Duke? You want to watch a no-no on the garage door out in public? Are you trying to get back at somebody? What the fuck are you doing, Duke? That's the question. Um, speaking of heart attacks, yo, everybody out there fucking with that legal weed and, and you think shit is sweet because weed is legalized and all that and you think shit is sweet fucking with these, 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 these lollipops and these candies and these chocolates and all that. Shit is not sweet, okay? My brother almost caught a heart attack fucking with this shit. He wound up in Bellevue. Remember I told you about that story? Well, a 70-year-old man suffered a heart attack after scoring some quote-unquote killer bud. Duke was fucking around with those baked lollipops, which have 90 milligrams of THC in them. And money caught a heart attack. Thank God the seven-year-old guy didn't die. Um, but he had smoked marijuana in his life. But them candies ain't like that. Listen, it, it, that, that's a lot of uh, uh, weed to have in a lollipop to begin with. But you never know when you could have, uh, you suck on or chew on the part of the lollipop that has all the weed. That's, that's the danger with this shit. You got to go slow with those edibles. Trust me. Trust me, I'll share my experience with them again, and, and I'll tell you about uh, uh, my brother's experience. He wound up in Bellevue, Duke. He wound up in motherfucking Bellevue, my brother, Professor Rappaport, fucking with those candies. All right, so fortunately this guy lived, but yo, don't get gassed up and hyped up uh, on those edibles and think them shits are like M&Ms and Skittles. They're not. And if you get a bad batch, you too could wind up in the hospital. I'm done. Fucking done. See, I am Rap Poor Stereo Podcast. Okay? My name is the Gringo Man Dingo, a.k.a. White Mike, a.k.a. the White Chocolatito, a.k.a. Mr. White Folks, a.k.a. Milk, and so on and so forth. Uh, I'm going to ask Miles and Jordan to take us out of here with something real nice, something real proper, but most importantly, oh yeah, something real funky. <laughs>